Hey everybody, how we doing today? Beautiful day here in the Florida Keys. Looking awful ugly this morning, blowing about 15 to 20s, but uh, this afternoon it's supposed to get down to about the fives. So it should be a beautiful evening. But that brings us to the point of today's video and that's going to be the change of seasons to more of the fall pattern and what that encompasses. So we're going to try to do a little bit of fishing and a little bit of chatting about what's going to be upcoming for the channel for the uh, fourth quarter. Now, although not a specifically fishing related, but a big change that happens in this fourth quarter, especially in September and October, is the tourists are gone. Uh, this is our swing part of the season, our shoulder season, where uh, we're probably running at about 25% capacity. Uh, kids are back in school, students are back to college, uh, getting back to regular life, so our uh, tourism really drops. I mean, it's a good and a bad thing. It's good for me because as you can see, there's nobody. I won't see anybody. And then when I start going out, uh, even out to the reef and stuff, there won't be anybody around. So that does make it nice to being on the water plus less fishing pressure. Uh, for people that are visiting, it's the cheapest time of the year. You'll find a lot better rates at the hotels. Uh, the businesses are a lot slower, so no lines, no traffic. So it is actually one of my uh, more favorite times just because of that. The next big change, which actually really affects my personal fishing, is the summer storms. Those guys, uh, those will slowly start dissipating. Uh, even just a couple of degrees makes a big difference. And then you couple that with shorter days, because as the nights start getting earlier, less daylight hours for the waters and everything to heat up, and those things will start dissipating. Um, I talk about it a lot of those during the summertime and I show you those videos of what they're like. But now Key West is gone. So I gotta hopefully run into it by keeping my directional according to the wind. This is the problem. They're just 15, 20, half an hour, just these super volatile storms that just come out and they'll just smash everything in their way. And like I talked about, it's about if I was to die, 68% chance it would be due to those things. So that really affects my fishing because during the summertime, I don't find that risk trade-off as beneficial for me to go offshore when those uh, big storms are floating around. So I, I kind of just write those off and I don't go out there as much. So that kind of affects things that way. Um, as those lessen, what happens is that we still get storms. A lot of storms is going to become winter times and whatnot, but they're larger and they're more uh, of a pattern that you can see farther out. So you'll see these forecasted storms. They're these big bruja ones. They're gonna last for a couple of days. And hey, I know, and I'm not gonna go out during the shore when it's blowing 20, 30 knots out there. So that doesn't affect me, but at least I know. And then on days where it shows nice and sunny, low winds, I don't have to watch my back because during the summertime, those big storms are still around and can run right through you. So big change there is those summer storms kind of going away. But that doesn't mean the hurricanes are going away. We're going to be getting those for the next two and a half months. Um, they usually say from um, September to November is kind of the times. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes into December this year with global warming and such. So those will still be a problem, but we get a weak headway of those, so not such a worry. Oh, uh, speaking of hurricanes, uh, if you like the All About the Bait guide shirts here, button up guide shirts, I uh, had a lot of requests from people wanting to get the sale price because when I ran that second run special, uh, that was right during the Hurricane Dorian, so a lot of people couldn't buy or were hesitant to buy not knowing if they would have a house or not. So what I've been doing is uh, when people contact me, I just uh, created a uh, discount code. So if you're interested in that, Go to the, uh, the allaboutthebait.com, choose your guide shirt. When you go to check out in the uh, discount code box, uh, type in Dorian, like Hurricane Dorian, but just Dorian, D-O-R-I-A-N, and I'll deduct the five bucks and get you that same sale price. So check them out if you missed it. Now our next big change for the fall are these guys. Boom. 
Look at those flashers. The white baits are here and specifically the pilchards. Beautiful, beautiful pilchards are in town. And we've got all fishes in the Florida Keys' favorite food. The beautiful, beautiful pilchards. Ah, that's golden there. And uh, with those pilchards starting to move inshore, everything else follows. So all those pelagics that are generally out by the Gulf Stream 20, 30 miles, they're gonna start following those schools in and we'll start seeing a lot more of those inshore. So I'll start catching cereal mackerels, you'll catch kingfish inshore in these uh, outlets here and then also on the uh, Gulf side. But uh, wherever you find the pilchards, you're gonna find the, the fish following them and it makes for a good time. There's a nice snapper on the paddle tail. That'd be a keeper. Bam. Went with the half ounce, need a little bit deeper. So kind of the changes you'll see offshore, uh, there'll still be dolphins around, except they're gonna be bigger, more mature ones than during the summertime where you, you get a lot more juveniles. So you have a lot more volume during the summertime, but you don't get those bigger quality fish. As we start going to the fall transition, a lot of those bigger fish start moving in and then you'll start seeing more of those. Uh, same with the black fins tunas. Uh, I'll start catching a lot of those now um, as the water starts cooling off and then the bait starts pulling in. Um, we'll start seeing sailfish more often right along the reef. Everything will start shifting from the Gulf Stream and start pulling in right to the edge of our reef. So it really makes it nice, especially for me since I don't want to go 25, 30 miles to catch a fish. Um, same thing on the Gulf side, we'll see, start seeing the, uh, the offshore fish out there, like the cobias start moving inshore on the flats. Uh, like I said, all the mackerels, uh, kingfish, the uh, cereal mackerel, Spanish. And then uh, we'll also see a transition of those uh, more northerly fish that we don't see down here in the Keys, or at least this far down in Key West, which is the redfish and the trout. Um, we'll have a really good trout bite. It gets a really good as you move up the Keys and it starts tapering off down to where we are, but we at least start seeing them. So that first cold snap, that'll shift them down. And then we'll start seeing those uh, sea trout on the flats on the Gulf side. Um, same thing with the redfish, I catch them. <laughs> once or twice a year but i'll catch a lot of them because they'll school in move to a certain spot down here in one of the off back islands there and i'll catch a few redfish but other than that never see them again uh, i need to target snook so that'll be the tip best time to chase after the snook uh, but a lot of that uh, transition is mainly for three reasons one is bait okay the reasons for migrations are one is for after the food so as all those uh, white uh, baits start moving, like the pin, um, the pilchards, that'll bring the fish in. Two is uh, spawning. So a lot of time we'll have spawning action where it's not really affected as much during the winter time. Uh, but the third reason is temperatures. Uh, fish will migrate via the, uh, the different water temperatures. So as it gets colder, it's primarily a lot colder in the mainland and it, it gets warmer as you move down to where we are. So just like tourists, those fish will follow along. So as the water degrees hit a certain temp, that triggers an activity in the mine and they know they migrate down. So that's kind of the changes we'll see because of that. On the flats, uh, kind of works the same way. The, uh, the bone fishing will be pretty good as long as the temps stay fairly warm. They're actually here year round. So just on those extreme cold times, it'll be hard to find those. Uh, the juvenile tarpon will be around constantly all year round. But again, once that uh, low 70 mark, uh, then they start going to deeper water to kind of take cover. And then uh, permit actually will be picking up here September, October. 
Oh, got a nice little grouper. September, October, nice little red. So I'm gonna be targeting the bigger permit as they start moving up. Uh, right now that water temps, like I said, it's, are high 80s, 90s. So that's like way too hot for everything. So uh, as we get to that fall transition, we'll get a couple degrees cooler and then that'll make for some better flats fishing. Another transition we'll see with the sports fish is that uh, we'll start seeing the sharks start moving inshore, especially uh, in the back country along the flats and channels there. Uh, they'll be coming down to uh, start feeding up and uh, getting ready to mate. Then uh, when we get those really cold dips uh, moving through the cold fronts, uh, we'll see the big barracudas moving on the flats because they like that transition as well. Um, another species to look out for is the uh, the big jack crevels. Um, we'll have the normal schoolies all over, but uh, it changes during the uh, fall winter because uh, the big boys will start coming through and chasing the bait and you'll catch those in shore a lot and that makes things a lot of fun. something quick mover pulling me oh head shake what is that uh, uh. pulling drag not jumping. Oh, there's a jump. Cooters, Mr. Cooters. I must have all oh, came off, cut me off. Yeah, at least I got a good jump out of them. Yeah, it cut me off. Dang you, Cooters. So that's a little bit of uh, what to expect for the fourth quarter, that uh, end of September, October, November, December. Uh, basically when we start getting those cooler temps down here now you always got to remember our cooler temps is uh, a low 80s high 70s as our cold time frame so you got to take that with a grain of salt but it's a change and then that change brings other changes especially in regards to the fish so in synopsis we got uh, less tourists in town so less competition for the fish we got the uh, pilchards in, that means fish candy all inshore and that brings all the boys inside. Uh, offshore stuff starts moving in towards the edge of the reef. So all those things where normally people had to go 30 to 50 miles out, they can get them five miles out. Uh, the Gulf side, same thing. All those big fish that are out hovering around the wrecks and stuff along the Gulf will move inshore right along those edges and inside the channels. So a lot of good stuff, a lot of fun stuff. The negatives, the weather starts to become a little bit more volatile. We do get our storms, we get some uh, cold fronts. Um, don't get as many flat calm days, but you just gotta kinda hit and choose. But with all those pilchards in town, that means those bigger fish are just a lot closer, so you can tend to get into them a lot easier. So now, uh, we're getting closer to uh, magic hour. Got some pinfish. So I'm gonna see if the uh, juvenile tarpon are around. Haven't been out here in a long time, so I'm just gonna be a nice day just to see if I see any rollers, and then uh, hopefully I'll be able to jump one or two. So that's the plan. The end of the video. All right, there shall be the beginning of the magic hour. Beautiful evening, winds died. Uh, current finished uh, going out, so now it's just switching and slowly coming inwards. Uh, usually that's not the greatest, but I don't mind it just being the fact that uh, it's kind of a calm current. The tarpon don't mind that. They'll swim around and chase after stuff, so we're okay there. Uh, really flat, so I could see any activity, any rolling tarpon, any bait busting, so I can tell how much is around. So now it's just a matter of see if we can connect on one. Oh, I think we got a bite on... Oh chasing it something's messing with it there we go oh and that's all you get bit me off 
toothy critter. Dang it. Right at the beginning of magic hour. Ugh. Oh, got something hitting this one. And toothy critter. Dang it. Oh, there goes two baits and two hooks. Just like that. Ooh, something just jumped there. Oh, whatever that's attacking my bait. I even think it's alive. Just don't eat my bobber. Well, I am not seeing any type of top water movement at all. No rolling, no bait busting, no jumping. Just saw some shark fins, that's about it. Otherwise, getting close to the end of the magic hour. Oh, and it pulled it off, dang it. I don't think that was what we were looking for to begin with. Well, no tarpon. So I guess there's no more tarpon in the Florida Keys. Empty. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I think uh, tomorrow the winds are forecasted to come out of the south, directly to the north. Uh, so that means I'll be heading out to the Gulf side. So maybe I'll be able to track one down over there. We'll have to see. Got to keep my tarpon skills up. But uh, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. And don't forget the Hurricane Dorian discount on the guide shirts. Uh, pick up a guide shirt, discount code Dorian at checkout, and you're good to go. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video. Bye.